But I wanted to ask you about Iran's role in this emerging alternative world order, given that it has recently joined BRICS, that it does have really robust relations with Russia and China. From your perspective, being in Iran, could you talk about the significance of Iran's global role in this way and its partnerships with the what I think the United States views, of course, as the uh, ultimate engine of multipolarity, Russia and China? I think the biggest achievement of President Raisi was his foreign policy. And he was able to change Iran's relationships with many countries. He, 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 he traveled a lot across the country. He, he went to each province at least once a year. And he would go to the, and he would focus on the most deprived areas in these provinces. But he also traveled a lot uh, abroad. And uh, he visited many countries. He, was, he went to Indonesia, he went to Pakistan, Sri Lanka, China, Russia. He went to Africa, to a number of countries in Africa and Latin America and in the region. He, he traveled a lot in the, during these three years and he built up ties with non-Western countries. And as you pointed out, he succeeded in joining uh, or having Iran join the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, which and there will be a summit in a couple of months from now. Uh, he also succeeded, uh, or he 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 uh, uh, did what needed to be done to get Iran into BRICS. Iran's relationship with Russia and China has evolved. Iran's relationship with India has evolved. Uh, he's also been focusing on transport corridors, the north-south corridor between that links. Russia, Central Asia, uh, the Caucasus, uh, Belarus to the Persian Gulf and the Indian Ocean, but also the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, so he's made Iran the center for, uh, or is developing Iran as the center for commerce and trade and trans the transportation of goods. And he's also been able to bring about rapprochement uh, with Saudi Arabia, uh, something which began with General Soleimani. General Soleimani was traveling to from Syria to Iraq to meet the Iraqi Prime Minister at that time, Adel, Dr. Adel Abdul Mahdi, when the Americans murdered General Soleimani. What? What would? Why? Why was in, he in Iraq? The Prime Minister of Iraq at that time said he was supposed to meet me in the morning to discuss a letter from Saudi Arabia uh, uh, regarding rapprochement. So General Soleimani was going going to back to Baghdad to help bring about rapprochement when the Americans murdered him, and obviously that is very much a part of the reason why he was killed. The Americans did not want rapprochement between Iran and Saudi Arabia. The Americans don't want rapprochement between any of the countries in the region. They want all the countries to be divided. So the process continued with negotiations in Iraq and in. Uh, um, Oman, but ultimately um, th through uh, Chinese mediation, the Iranians and the Saudis uh, were reestablished ties. So uh, his his objective was to establish strong ties with neighboring countries, both political, cultural, but also economic ties, and to create help create a greater integration among Asian countries. Iran is in the West, China in the East, India in the South, and of course, Central Asia and Russia. And uh, BRICS is especially important because uh, BRICS uh, has the potential to circumvent um, U.S. financial institutions and the U.S. dollar so that countries across the global South can do trade and business without being threatened or impeded by the United States. So. Uh, a lot has been done. A lot of changes have taken place. The world is changing, and 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 as these changes are taking place, the United States continues to antagonize countries like China, intensifying the war with Russia and in a way in which they are becoming increasingly ambivalent about the role of NATO forces, which is extremely dangerous. But also, the United States has has destroyed its demolished its image across the world for showing itself to be genocidal and also weak because the United States has failed in the Red Sea, something that I 
failed to mention. Uh, uh, they failed against uh, Yemen. They failed against the, the Americans for a decade helped starve Yemen. They helped with the genocide against Yemen. And now Yemen has defeated the Americans in the Red Sea. And the only thing that the Americans and the British can do is bomb radio stations and kill innocent people in response. So the United States has destroyed its its image. The West has destroyed its image. They've destroyed uh, their uh, their the image that they had of some superior exceptional power. And uh, therefore, I think that as we move forward, uh, Iran's um, relationship with countries in the global south will continue to expand, and ultimately, the West, if they are, if they have sane politicians, they will start thinking about uh, rebuilding their ties with Iran. Otherwise, they will continue to isolate themselves further in our region, and I think across the world. Thanks, uh, Professor Morandi. As you were speaking, I. Def, I, I came. A question came to mind about just how this has impacted Iran. We, I haven't even mentioned the uh, just absolutely hor horrific sanctions that the United States imposes upon Iran. And so, I wanted to ask you: How has Iran's growing uh, role in the multipolar world order, its relationships with other champions and engines of this new alternative order how has that assisted iran because the theory is is that uh, these sanctions on iran are supposed to starve iran iranian people will rise up they'll overthrow the government that the u.s doesn't like and iran will be another vassal state to the united states like uh, the others in the region and globally so could you talk about how uh, its emerging role in the multipolar world order and these relationships that you spoke of have assisted Iran in terms of being able to achieve not just resilience, but also progress in the face of these uh, illegal uh, sanctions. Well, first, I think it shows how inhumane and barbaric the United States, the regime in the United States and, and regimes in Europe are. The fact that they use sanctions targeting women and children for political gains shows that they are really no different from the Israeli regime. And that's why they support the, the this Holocaust in Gaza as well. It's because they have no sense of morality. They are shameless and immoral. Uh, they target Iranians, they they kill Iranians through sanctions to get, you know, to because for them the end justifies the means. But what they have done is that while hurting many Iranians, without a doubt, they've created an incentive for the Iranians to become more independent. So today you see that Iranian military capabilities are among the best in the world. Iranian drones and missiles uh, of different types are in demand in a way in which the true that would only that's only the case with a handful of countries. Uh, so Iran's been able to create an indig indigenous military capability and save a lot of money that way. The Iranians also began to develop their own industries, their own, own high-tech industries. Iran's one of the most advanced countries in nanotechnology, in stem cell research, and so on. So Iran has been able to uh, develop uh, indigenous capabilities as a result of the sanctions, but also what the United States has done is it has created an, an incentive for Iran to, to become more global. In the past, the focus was on relations with the West. Now Iran is exploring ties with countries that in the past they only had diplomatic relations with, but now they are really doing business with Indonesia, with countries across South Asia, with Central Asian countries, railroads are, railroads are being created. So the world is changing. So Iran, a lot of the things that in the past the Iranians depended on the West to obtain, now they obtain them through China. They obtain them through Russia or Iran can export. The needs of Russia are now being met by Iran. The, the trade relations between Iran and Russia has, has grown significantly over the past two, three years. Uh, the same is true with China. China sees Iran as an independent country that it can rely on. So it wants to buy its oil from Iran because it knows that Iran will not will not be uh, influenced by Western threats. 
but that's not necessarily the case with other oil or energy producing countries. So in the short term, the Americans have caused a lot of damage. But in the long term, the Americans in the West have done more damage to themselves than to anyone else. Yeah, and I think it's underestimated just how rapid and quickly Iran's influence and its economic development ha has transpired. I mean, maybe uh, you could close with just talking about that. I, these sanctions are supposed to impoverish Iran. They're supposed to create a situation for Iran that is untenable for the people. Uh, maybe you could close on just what you have seen over the years in terms of Iran's development in the face of what is an act of war? Sanctions are supposed to destroy people's lives. They are used for uh, political and military purposes. So uh, perhaps I know that your time is very valuable. So uh, you could close on over the years. What have you seen? Well, life in Iran is difficult. I mean, the sanctions have been going on for many years. So there is, I'm not saying that Iran is some sort of utopia, but if you compare for example, the metro in Tehran with the metro in New York, uh, the metro in Tehran is far, far better. Or for example, um, again, Iran's in the past, Iran was surrounded by the United States. The Americans occupied Afghanistan and Iraq. Now Iran has allies in Iraq. It has allies in Syria. It has allies in Yemen, the Americans have withdrawn. And now the Israeli regime, the key US ally uh, in the world, uh, is surrounded by the axis of resistance. So in 2003, the, Iran was surrounded. Now the Israeli regime is more or less surrounded. But most importantly, most importantly, I think that uh, President Raisi's demise um should revealed revealed something and that is that contrary to all the rhetoric about iran in the west and the propaganda that the islamic republic of iran has a large amount of legitimacy it has huge amount a huge amount of legitimacy in the eyes of its own people millions of people went to the streets of tehran for the funeral no one can deny that the footage is there Millions across the country went through in the different funeral processions participated as well. Why is that the case? Can the Americans ever muster such support? Right now you see what's going on in the United States with Biden and Trump. So uh, there must, you know, the, the Americans in the West have to rethink. There is something about Iran that despite all the sanctions, despite all the hostility, despite all the anti-Iran propaganda, the number of anti-Iranian Persian language media funded by Western governments is uh, is extraordinarily high. There's no, there's nothing else like it in the world. The, the anti-Russian or anti-Chinese or anti-Venezuelan uh, media that is funded by Western countries, pay, you know, they're, they're nothing compared to what they're doing against Iran. There are more Persian channel, uh, Persian language media outlets against Iran than there are inside the country. But despite the propaganda, the sanctions, the strangulation, why is it that people come in such numbers to the streets for the funeral of their president? So maybe, maybe, just maybe you're, listeners and viewers should think about this. I, I know your your listeners and viewers are politically aware, but I mean, in general, uh, maybe people should start thinking that uh, about uh, why this is the case. And perhaps Iran is maybe just not as evil and such a dystopia as they've been told over the last 47 years. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Professor Marandi, I was actually, as you mentioned, the metro station, uh, the YouTube algorithm was doing its work and uh, probably knew I was interviewing you uh, at this point and sent me a travel blog, a vlog of uh, the Iranian metro in, in Tehran. And uh, it was it was quite nice and <laughs> much cleaner, much, much more functional than uh, the New York City subway, which is racked by an aging and crumbling infrastructure. 
But in, in any case, Professor Morandi, do you have any uh, closing comments? I, I know that you have a very busy schedule. Any closing comments you have for viewers? Anything you want to share before I let you go? No, I just think that uh, your viewers um, are very politically aware, so this may not be necessary, but I, but the focus should remain on Gaza. All of us have to do uh, whatever we can to create greater awareness, to support the people of Gaza, to support the resistance, a legitimate resistance, just as legitimate as the resistance, military resistance against apartheid uh, South Africa. It's our responsibility to stand up against genocide. And I hope that uh, no matter how difficult life is and how much work we all have, that we spend a bit of time, as much time every day as we can to uh, continue gr creating greater, greater awareness, because I think this is what is really uh, the most dangerous thing for the, uh, the, the Zionist regime.